I founded World Fund exactly eight years ago. I had spent about 10 years on Wall Street as a securities analyst, and most of that time spent following Latin corporates. And what became apparent to me was the quality of the workforce, really poorly educated. And after 9-11, when I decided to reorient myself, I knew it'd be in the area of education in Latin America. Um, it was a region that had given to me so much professionally and personally. And I knew that was the key area where I could, I could give back. On the economic level, you really have not been able to develop a large enough quality workforce to support the kind of um, demand that private sector is, is, is requiring to grow in the region. On the social level, the poor quality of education does not encourage civic engagement and has lent itself to, to extreme and populist movements. So from that perspective, a higher educated public um, is a critical driver of, of, of social and political development in the region. An example that strikes me very concretely is I visited a um, auto assembly line in the south part of Brazil. And I'll never forget the general manager of the plant. Um, he said that they would have gotten extreme levels of tax breaks had they built this plant in the northeast. But they decided they had to forego those tax breaks to build it in the south of Brazil because that was where the more educated workforce was. And it, it just it struck me as so um, well, so sad and, 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 and really something that had to be addressed because you have such high levels of under and unemployment in the region, including Brazil, yet you have such um, great demand. There's a mismatch between the demand for employees and what the employees can do. Our organization has evolved quite a bit over the last eight years. We started by primarily providing scholarship and CapEx funding to networks of schools, not-for-profit schools serving poor communities. Um, we still do that, and we think it's very important to be very connected with bricks and mortar schools. Increasingly, however, our program emphasis is on teacher and principal training in the public systems. Um, what we found was the key reason why the quality of education was so low in Latin America was the very poor quality of teaching. And so we thought, well, how do we as a U.S. headquarter organization make an impact on the quality of teaching in the region? So we picked a couple areas, particularly the STEM areas, science, technology, engineering, and math, and English training, which are so critical to, to um, working in today's economy. And we thought, can we bring some best practices from the U.S. down to the region? So we partnered with some major partners here, Dartmouth College, Harvard University, to um, train public school teachers and principals how to perform better, whether it be in their classroom or a principal, how to lead his or her school more effectively. We do not have, as a U.S. headquarter organization, we don't have the power to change the system from the top down. What we're trying to do is identify the, the diamonds in the rough, if you will, and make them better. So we, we run three teacher and principal training programs, two in Mexico, one in Brazil. And in Mexico, we're training about 500 teachers and about 250 principals a year. We provide individual scholarships to kids going to these schools. And um, in fact, a number of them, we've actually then helped them get to university. We arranged actually a scholarship. One of the graduates from one of our partner schools is getting a full scholarship to University of New Mexico starting in a couple weeks. Um, and she comes from a very humble background. Her parents are, are street cleaners. And um, she wants to become a medical engineer to try to go back and help her, help her community. The problem is not an access problem. Well over 90% of Latin American students start school, but well over 50% drop out um, by the time they're 13, 14. In Latin America, like in the U.S., a high school degree doesn't get you much. You need some kind of ongoing education to be able to really break the cycle and get a job that provides a dignified and meaningful existence. I'll never forget doing an interview with people calling in and every single question from the people calling in was, why would we as Americans want to help Mexican improve their education and we have enough problems at home? And that's an understandable reaction. Um, you know, whether we like it or not, as U.S. Americans, our fortunes are tied to the fortunes of Mexico. There is a lot of um, concern and skepticism on the ground locally that there might be political agendas or drives. And being foreign-based, 
um, seems to eliminate that um, that skepticism or suspicion that we have other local political motives. Our key goal for 2011 is to try to more than double the number of teachers and principals and students we're, we're, we're impacting. So as a result, um, we have an aggressive top line goal, if you will, to, to raise almost double the funds in order to support that growth and support that investment in the region. The key reason people accept the value of what we're doing is because our programs work. Um, you really see concrete results. The teachers absolutely perform better, so as a result, their kids are performing better and happier, principals are, so that is the single most important reason um, our programs are being so widely accepted. Right now, our, our key effort is trying to evolve our messaging and our branding such that it reflects where we are today as an organization. Um, I think we've done a fabulous job developing and now we're ramping up, scaling our programs. We're now in the process of trying to do a better job explaining that to the world.